Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rahi. And I'm Richard. And today we'll be talking over the reading, So Smart But Thinks He Knows It All. So we all like to be uh, respected, and we all, we all like to be, uh, uh, sorry, we all, we all have to have, have respect, and, uh, and we all like to work with people who are like us. People can easily lose their credibility, uh, but we can change that behavior but it just takes time. So let me explain the topics we originally be going over today. So the first one I'll be talking about is your tone of voice and then the way you argue. And then Richard will go into your word choice and language choice when speaking and listening. And then lastly, I'll cover uh, offensive body language. So the first topic is your tone of voice. So everyone has had that one professor who just talks slowly and has that monotone voice. And trust me, it's not you, Professor. <laughs> so, and I bet most of you guys would lose attention within 15 to 10, 15 to 20 minutes of the, of the present, and then pop out your phone and your laptops. So it's best to avoid this situation. Uh, the next thing, especially, I'm sorry, especially when uh, you're giving an interview, you don't want to uh, lose your employer's attention. So it's best to avoid slow delivery and using monotone. The next thing I'll talk about is overly pronounced delivery. And I experienced this a lot during my job. Uh, so from a show of hands, who here has worked at a drive-thru before? Pharmacy, uh, fast food, bank. So you guys probably know what I'm going to talk about here. So I work as a bank teller, and I have to uh, work at the drive-thru a lot. And sometimes it's really hard to hear because there's music in the lobby and then people talking around me. And and sometimes I have to tell the customer repeat what they say, and for some reason, they don't like that. So me and Richard are going to give you an example of how that works at my work. Good afternoon, how are you? I'm doing good. Can I get a deposit slip? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Can you please repeat that? Can I have a deposit slip? See, I have to be loyal to the customer, so I have to say, sure, no problem with this mom of it, but what I really want to do is just punch in the face. So that was not needed, so make sure to avoid this overly pronounced delivery. So the next topic I'll talk about is the way you argue. And the chapter mentions this two-sided message uh, where uh, it follows the format of I'm right, you're right, balance, I'm a little more right. And I'm going to be using a simple example of cars and, uh, and trucks. And I'm, I'm going to be in favor of cars. So here's a bad way of starting an argument. I like cars because the trucks suck. You have no evidence and it just sounds arrogant. And so here's uh, here's another. I'm gonna give that example where we've seen the two-sided message. So first, you want to give your viewpoint of your argument and then give three data points or proof of your uh, of your argument. And then you want to go back to the opposing argument and give three data points of that argument. And then you want to kind of balance out. For for so for so for example, I'm gonna use a car and truck uh, argument again. So. I prefer cars because cars are more fuel efficient, uh, more economic friendly, and easier to zip through ca uh, traffic. Uh, on the other hand, trucks are also good for hauling large amounts, icy roads, and off-road situations. But I prefer, and then you balance out, and then you, I prefer uh, cars since trucks, uh, I prefer cars because I do a lot more traveling, and it saves me a lot, a lot on gas. So, People, people develop social norms about languages in a given situation. So all of us know how our friends and family and maybe peers react in a certain way by using a tone or a voice in a persuading manner. Say, you know how to convince someone to like leave the house and go somewhere, or they're just gonna stay at home. So I wanna give an example of, my, I have a little brother, he's 10 years old. He's just a homebody. He likes to stay home, play video games, play Call of Duty, be on his iPad. And whenever we have family events, we tend to go out to a restaurant, go to the mall, go to the movies, just go out and have fun with each other. And he just throws a fit every single time we go, we go out. So my mom comes out and throws him in the center. Hey, North Park has game stuff. So, if, if you be on your best behavior, we can go to GameStop and you can get a video game for yourself. So literally now, he's running to the car, fastening his seatbelt, before we know. 
So, opinionated language. Or, even an ignorant person would know what, it, what opinionated like, language is. Sorry, I didn't mean to assume that you guys know it already, but if you guys use context clues with opinionated language, you guys would figure it out. It's just uh, using opinions with languages, just like it seems. Now, language intensity. This is, this is the distance between your point of view and a neutral state. So, I just bought a new pair of shoes, and they're killing my feet. Instead of using a dramatic word like killing, I could use causing my feet to ache instead. We also have qualifiers, which is an element of language intensity. These are words like perhaps, maybe, they're, they're usually words of uncertainty, just to pull an extent to where you're not confident yet. For example, the Cowboys might win a game if Brandon Whedon wasn't our quarterback. And yes, no, he is no longer our quarterback. <laughs> so two obvious sources of offensive behaviors are eye contact and posture. It's really important that we keep these two things in mind whenever we have a conversation with colleagues, professors, in the workplace. After all, we're, we're all about to get our degrees and we're all about to be going out and working. Try to maintain eye contact with them after every sentence, just to reconnect with the, your reader and, and just show that you're interested in the conversation. While you're talking to someone, it's so obvious if you're by reading your facial expression or your body language, if you're not interested or you're just bored to death. All right. So there's some techniques for for encouraging listeners. So speaking and listening comes hand in hand. Listening is very important, just like just like speaking is, and we have to articulate our words a certain way. We're talking to someone not just because we're talking to them for fun, but they want to hear our insight, our opinion about everything. So I encourage you guys to eliminate distractions, look for key ideas, and ask plenty of questions. You just never know who you're going to meet in the workplace. So be, be professional at all times. So let me throw, that, throw to a story that happened just this previous Saturday. I was working as a manager on duty at my parents' nail salon in White Rock Lake. So a customer comes in and greets me and notice I just happen to be wearing a baby outfit slash shirt at the time. And she asked me, oh, are you in beta outside? And I was like, yeah, I am. She's like, well, so how are your grades? And I was like, yeah, they're doing good. Are you looking at any firms right now? And I was like, oh, I'm looking at McLattery, Montgomery, Kalsha Gretsch, but I'm just looking for an internship right now. She's like, and she told me, hey, if you have time, send me your resume. Send me your resume and I'll read it when you have a chance. So. She reaches into her purse and pulls out her business card. She hands me her business card, and it's Price Water Coopers. She's the director and leading recruiter for Price Water Coopers. And all of you guys, most of you guys are accountants. You guys know what Price Water Coopers is. So I was really fortunate and really lucky. And as she was leaving, and I took her, took her payments. I greeted her, and was, and of course, sent her my resume. <laughs> So me and Rahi are going to do a little skit for you guys on how to paraphrase, reflect, and summarize. Hey Rahi, how are you doing today? I'm good, Richard. So when do you want to finish that reading presentation? Well, it's about 7 o'clock right now. I'll say well, we should uh, work on it for a couple hours. Let's finish the PowerPoint slides and begin rehearsing so we can perfect it. Okay, yeah, let's definitely finish the PowerPoint slides and let's start rehearsing. All right, man, I know you're tired, I'm tired. We both got tests to study for tomorrow. How about we move this for tomorrow? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'm beat, I got an exam tomorrow. Still got to study, probably stay up till three or four, but it's all right. So let's, let's practice on our own time, work on our presentation, and we'll perfect it for tomorrow. All right, sounds good. Yeah, so we're already done with the presentation, so I'll definitely rehearse on my part, and then we'll perfect it tomorrow. All right, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Alright, so the last topic we'll talk about is offensive body language. The chapter mentions this big seven. It's probably obvious to you guys that these are a big no-no in 
working environment. So do not do that. So it will just make you give an impression that you're better than everybody else. Sometimes you'll uh, run into a boss or someone or a manager that will do some of these things. Just don't fall off this track. Um, um, so, uh, although later down you may meet someone, uh, no matter if he's a desk clerk or a CEO, you want to you want to uh, greet everybody and with, with respect. Something as simple as have a nice day and putting a smile on his face will suffice. Uh, so from this reading, we all we all learn techniques on how not to be arrogant and condescending when speaking and listening. And since we're all seniors and we are close to graduation, and we are a step closer uh, to be professionals. Uh, and we must, we must start off with a good credibility. So let me give you some tips on how, and you must sustain that credibility even when you're in work. So let me give you some tips on what not to do and lose that credibility. So you don't want to accept the job offer and then back out of it right after. And worse, you don't want to accept that job offer and then back out three months after. And lastly, you don't want to, you don't want to leave without giving a notice. So from a recap of what we and Richard did, I talked about tone of voice, where I, I talked about three things to avoid, which was slow, overly pronounced uh, delivery, monotone voice, and uh, slow delivery. And then I talked about the two-sided message, where it follows the format. I'm right, you're right, on balance, I'm a little more right. All right, so I went into a couple techniques, or some techniques for speaking. I went over a theory called the language expect expectancy theory along with opinionated language, language intensity, and along with the elements of qualifiers. And over, over on the listening aspect, I encourage you guys to look for new ideas, avoid distractions, and ask for plenty of questions. Me and Rahi also did a skit about, about summarizing, reflecting, and paraphrasing. And we, in the last slide, we just talked about the big seven. These are just big no-nos you just do not know want to do in the workplace. Like tapping your pencil, looking behind the speaker, just not paying attention, being on your phone, etc. And you can see CEOs might, might, be, might be able to have power to do this, but everyone should be respected. So thank you, you guys. So keep calm and thank you for listening.